All right. So classic 2009 talk from Simon Sinek on, nope. All right. You guys see me, right? <laughs> so just finished the classic 2009 talk from Simon Sinek, which basically launched the whole thought process of starts with why in the golden circle. So today I'm going to throw it over to Tay to kick it off and see what you had written down. Yeah, so good. And I just love it, it was pretty much straight to the point. You just kind of put it out everything uh, as far as like uh, just what it means and how uh it is and it just kind of leaves it there so i think the first thing that starts with me he said everything starts uh from the inside out and i think for me just looking back over my journey i think that's when it ultimately uh i decided to make a change uh for me it started from the inside with me making this a uh, decision and me understanding why i made that decision so uh just the same thing with this uh business i think uh many of the leaders the first thing i know carrie the first thing that she do uh, before she signed anybody up, is like, why do you want to join? Uh, because she understands, like, she's uh, been through the process before, so she's understand, like, people are going to come against you. Uh, people are going to tell you no. Uh, the circumstances are going to tell you this is too much. It's overwhelming. Uh, and when those things do come, you know, she's not going to uh, go and just harp, like, harp on you and tell you you need to do this and you need to do that. She's going to remind you of what you told her, and that is why you started. So I think you have to always keep your why at the forefront, you have to always keep it in front of you somehow, whether it's uh, on your computer screen, whether it's on your phone screen, so you can be reminded and you can let that be your fuel, your fuel uh, to continue to push forward. Uh, and just the second thing that he said, he said people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And I think that's the importance of always being real, always showing people the behind the scenes of what you do and just under, and just being loud about the things that you do. Uh, when I first joined this uh, company with Kerry, you know, I didn't join for the money. Uh, I didn't join because I wanted to have a good time. I joined because I wanted the time freedom. Uh, so my why was more time with my kids, more time with my spouse. So for me, I supported her and I started, I started to come along and do the things necessary because I knew I had something that was more important than I wanted. And I know once we accomplished that time freedom, we was able to talk about those things and we was able to share that with other people who uh, may have husbands or spouses or wives who be uh, maybe working two or three jobs and don't have the time necessary uh, to spend with their family. So uh, I think you have to understand uh, and always keep, like I said, keeping in the forefront of why you started and, and just be loud, be loud about that. He said, when you be allowed about things that you believe in, you would draw, you would draw those to you who also believe in those same things. So uh, that really stuck out to me. And, and just the last thing I wanted to share, and I actually, when he said it, I thought about a quote from Kobe Bryant that I'm going to uh, uh, read to you guys. He said, don't be in pursuit of the results. Uh, embrace the journey. And I think that's important because the journey is, that's the fun part. Because once you reach uh, the results, once you get the final results of it, then uh, sadly to say, but when it happens, you have to do that and move on to the next thing. So you don't really get to celebrate it as long as you get to celebrate the journey. Uh, and this is the quote that uh, Kobe Bryant uh, gave on his last game. And he scored, uh, I forget how many he scored, but I watched the last game. I think it was like 60 points and he just went bananas. And it was traditional uh, Kobe just to go out and just uh, leave out on a high note. And the quote was this, uh, and he was speaking to his daughters and I just thought it was uh, so important. He said, those times when you get up early and you work hard, those times when you stay up late and you work hard. Those times when you don't feel like working, you're too tired, you don't want to push yourself, but you do it anyway. That is actually the dream. That's the dream. It's not the destination, it's the journey. And if you guys can understand that, then what you will see is you won't accomplish your dreams. Your dreams won't come true and great will. And I love that because I thought when me and Carrie started, everything we said we wanted to do, we didn't do those things. We did those things plus even more. So understanding like the goals and everything that you have set out for you, you're going to surpass that. When we say think bigger, dream bigger, we're not saying that because we want you to have more stuff because we understand like you're going to reach the things that you set out to do. So you have to think past that. You have to think more about what you want. Like you said, be driven by a cause. Be driven by your purpose. Be driven by your mission. Be driven by something that's greater than yourself so that when you get the things for yourself, you're able to feed and you're able to really just dig into the things that you really want to make a change in life. So uh, I, I think this is very important because it, it, it touches a topic that, you know, really is, is something that sticks to the heart 
of everybody. We have all have some type of cause or something that really just hits home with us and we really want to do things about it. So I think for us with our business, we got to have that foundation for our business that, you know, we have something that's bigger than us. When you're in something that's bigger than you, then you won't quit. You won't give up on it. You will be invested in it and you're more apt to do more for it. So uh, this was a great one. I think it's a great one to go on after just hearing what we heard uh, on uh, Tuesday because it's understanding like you get the right to strip for your life. You get to invest in the things that you want to do and you get to, you know, invest in the causes and the things that you want. And you ultimately, you have to identify what those things are and you have to identify why it is that you want to do those things. And as you do it, understand like you're going to make an impact on more than just yourself and your family, but also a lot of other people who believe uh, in those same things. And like he said, the last thing he said, the majority of people, they need to see somebody else do something before they do it. So somebody needs to see you to do those things before they do it. So understanding the impact it's going to make as you create momentum for other people to join in on things that uh, you're so, so dear to your heart. Well, we can just go ahead and stop now because that was amazing, Tay. Chad, what do you got that you can add to that? Le at least leave me one thing left. That'd be amazing. <laughs> well, the first thing is I was listening to this. I was just, I just started jotting down. Um, like every human being we're going to encounter, well, I won't say every, because there are, there are those people in the world that are just, I don't understand why they're just neg they They've built this comfort zone, if you will, of um, their normal is negativity. And so if you come into that negativity bubble with positivity, it's like you're foreign and they want to protect because they just think that's not real. They think that's fake. But I would say the majority of people that we deal with and that come into it works, let's just say opti let's just say there's there's pessimists and there's optimists, and let's just say the pessimists won't come in, the optimists will, right? Every optimist person wants to be happier, they want to be loved, they want to be excited about life, they want to be passionate, they want to have freedom, they want to have hope, they want to have their dreams come true. They want to have recognition, like every single one of them, right? So when we are operating, when I think about it, it works, I think about how this company operates within the world of all those, all those types of things. And so just a few points here. I have people, number one, people buy why, why you do it, right? I just wrote down uh, success begets success, hope, dream, winning. People want to be on the winning team, you know, like I know John Maxwell said this before, if, if, if we're having a, if we have Kobe, and me, and we're the captains of the basketball team. Nobody wants to be on my team. Everybody wants, would want to be on Kobe's team, right? They're like, we know we're going to win for our Kobe's team. They're like hiding when it's my turn to pick, you know? So success begets success. So once you get the momentum going with It Works, it's just, it gets easy. The, the growing and the building gets easier and easier. And that's like right now with the company being up so big, it's like all of a sudden a switch has been turned and everyone wants to jump in because they want to be part of the overall whirlwind of excitement and passion and focus and celebration, right? I mean, look right now on social media today, yesterday, today, every at works person is basically celebrating all kinds of things. Like everyone is like hyped up, endorphins flowing, you know, whatever, all the other stuff that releases when you're happy and you're excited and you're passionate. And it's just like all these people on the fence are like piling in the company because of what's happening in the company. Um, great gut decisions come from the why, lead with your heart or soul. I think that's huge. That's huge to, to uh, speak to our audiences with, with emotion, not just fact, fact, fact. You know, facts tell, stories sell, right? Stories is, is where the emotions come from. You know, he was talking about uh, uh, Martin Luther King, you know, and how he attracted that crowd. And, and all he said was, I believe. And, and he painted this vision, he painted this picture of the future. The people who believed in the Wright brothers, they worked with them with their blood, their sweat, their tears. If you guys haven't seen, a, there's a, a Walt Disney documentary on Netflix. It's so cool because when you when we think of Walt Disney, we think, wow, you know, that guy must have been loaded and he big dreamer. But when you see the backstory and you see the bankruptcies and you see how he hired people that he couldn't pay and they believed in him so much, they brought their life savings to the table after only knowing him for a short period of time because of the vision. You know, when you're able to sit down and and learn the backstory of it works and Mark Pentecost. And you see how he had people that would have full-time jobs and afterwards they would come in and they would fulfill a few orders and then they would leave and then they'd sit down with Mark and be like, how long are we going to do this? And he'd be like, I'm putting my house, second mortgage on my house, whatever it takes. And they just lined up behind him, 
first 3,000 distributors quit, but it's just that relentless, relentless, that hope, that purpose, that passion, that dream, that I will not be denied attitude, that it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Let's go, let's go. When you watch that uh, documentary of Walt Disney, you'll be like, wow, you just, you just, it's just that relentless resolve. It's like Jim Rohn would say, how long are you going to try? The answer is until. I'm not going to quit. I'm just going to keep going until it, I, I figure it out, until it works out. And that's what people like Walt Disney and Martin Luther King and Mark Pentecost have done. So, and then I guess the, the, the last thing here that I'll say is that the message, you know, and we've heard, we've heard Mark say things all the time, like uh, believe the impossible is possible or making the impossible possible. So many people come into this, this company and they think this is impossible in their mind. Cause we did the same thing. We came in thinking a few hundred bucks, but if someone would have said 10 grand, I'd say that's impossible for us initially. Right. But then you sit there and you start, you start thinking, man, they did it. I remember one time I sat there and it was with Blair McFarlane and they were saying, showing the, the numbers and they said ambassador and they said, we've made triple that amount. And I was like, what? And I cornered him at the end. I said, did you mean this number? And he said, yeah, we've had that number multiple months. And I thought, well, surely we could do 10% of that because we're at least one tenth. We can do one tenth of the work of Blair and Melody, right? We can figure out one tenth. We could be one tenth as smart as them. I could, get become one tenth as good looking as about anybody, you know, but especially with my beautiful wife, you know, I'm, I'm more the radio face. But she's got the, the beauty. Right. And so, you know, my last point here is just be believing the impossible is possible. Um, believing things like when Dave Ramsey says that focused intensity over time multiplied by God equals unstoppable momentum, man, when you buy into that and you're like, I'm going after unstoppable momentum and you know, the formula of just focused intensity, over time multiplied by God, you know, then you start to believe that, that if we're praying and we're doing the right things, we're putting in the work that God will put his extra on our, our ordinary. He'll put his super on our natural. And you get to hang out with people like Tay and Joel and go, man, God did it for them. They worked hard and it's, it's not rocket science. Neither one of these guys have a rocket science degree. Right. And so they figured it out. Their wives figured it out. So we can figure it out too. And within all of that whirlwind of stuff, every human being wants to be part of that. And so if you're loud and you're proud and you're speaking from your heart, and I think Rachel Jones would say you're, you're kind of using your Facebook or social media as a diary, and you're just putting it all out there. I mean, reality TV is huge, right? So people want to know the, the back. They want to know the, the, the kid took a crap on the floor, you know, and the, and the dog smeared it across the floor and, and, you know, laugh with you through, that's a horrible example, but laugh with you through the wins and the losses and the highs and the lows and the struggle and the wind and all that stuff. And that's what we represent here. We represent the real, the real and the possible. And most people, I mean, one out of three are happy. So if you're standing with two people, other people right now, and you're happy, odds are both of them are pretty miserable and they, they perfect person for this opportunity, right? To get involved with something that's going to make them happier and better. So I love this and I love the, the science part that he went into about the brain and the three things and the, the why. It's very few people get to the why because that's, that's where the passion is. And when someone is, a, when they believe in a cause and they believe in it, nothing, just nothing can stop them. So our, our, we're trying to help you guys get there where you believe in yourself. And then when you believe in yourself and you believe where you're going, people just start to pile onto the boat with you because they want to be part of that and they want to win too. That's awesome, Chad. So I'm going to start with the whole title of this message. I mean, the message was how great leaders inspire action. It wasn't how great leaders motivate action. I, I love when <clears throat> he talks about the golden circle, you know, at the center is the why, the next ring is how, and the, the third ring is what and how majority of society works backwards. They talk about what they do and how they're gonna do it, but then they never reach to the why portion of it. But inspired leaders always start with the why. So when we talk to you and when we teach you, we're always saying, hey, when you sign up that new person onto your team, you kind of have to, you may have just met them, but you got to kind of have a semi heart to heart with them and ask them, why are you doing this? And the reason why you're doing that 
is for the exact reason that both Tay and Chad said, you're going to come up with hard times. You're going to come up against things that are going to cause you to stumble. And if I know why you're doing this, I can help you get past that. You know, how do you get your new TT to work? Well, you always point back to their why. You know, we know that a lot of men want to stay home with their kids and raise their children. So when you always reflect back to that, that puts a driving force into a guy that, hey, you want to be the head of the household, but you want to be in the household every day so that you can be the head of the household. That ignites a fire in somebody. You know, for a mother that actually has to go away to work and put their kids in daycare, coming home so that their kids don't have to go to daycare is something that is super, super strong and a passion that's actually biologically built inside of their DNA. So once you do that and that clicks, all you have to do is point back to that and say, hey, this is why you're doing it. Don't listen to the hater. The hater doesn't know that you want to be home with your kids. The hater's still going away to their job. They haven't figured out why you're doing this. They just see what you're doing and they don't like what you're doing. But if they knew why you were doing it, they would come alongside you. You know, the why causes people to get emotionally connected to their actions. You know, we talk about right now being a, a coffee dealer. I'm a coffee dealer. I'm a coffee dealer. Well, that, that doesn't sound as cool. Hey, buy my coffee. You know, we're going over the, the benefits of the coffee. You know, why, why should you buy the coffee? Well, because you help people go debt free. You help people live life on their own terms. That's why you're doing it. Well, how do you do it? Through sales, through marketing of what? Amazing coffee that has benefits, not just drinking coffee. See, when you start with the why, the product actually becomes even more valuable because there's so much more attached to it than just, hey, drink my coffee. You know, when your why is big enough, you'll figure everything out. Uh, I, I like to use Stephanie as a perfect example of this because she's a red driven personality and you know, a red driver personality looks at situations and go, why can't everybody else just figure it out? I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out as I go. Why? Because my why is big enough that the how doesn't matter. I'll figure out the how I'll like Chad said, until I figure it out, I will keep doing until I figure it out. And I, I, got the quote down from Ralph Waldo Emerson because it's one of my favorite quotes and it's the man who knows how will always have a job. The man who knows why will always be his boss. You know, the guy that knows why doesn't always need to know the how. He needs to know the who. And with this business, that is absolutely how this works. We need to know who we can help so that we can get to our why through the how. I know that was confusing. You may have to rewind it and listen to it again. But start thinking about why you're doing it works. That will allow you to connect with other people. If you're sharing your why you're doing it works as opposed to just sh sharing your how or your what of it works, you will connect with people on completely different levels. You know, we talk about all the time when we started sharing about our bankruptcy and standing in food lines and foreclosures and having cars repossessed, it connected to other people that had been in those situations. It even connected to people that hadn't been in those situations because there's people that look at that situation and go, I'm there, I can do it too. And then there's people that aren't in that situation and go, well, man, if they can do it, I can surely do it. Like Chad said, if they can do it, I can at least do one-tenth of the work. That's great. So start sharing your why. You know, he was talking about Martin Luther King saying, I have a dream, 
It wasn't a, I have a plan speech. Start sharing your dream, start sharing your why. And what you'll do is you'll start connecting with others that have maybe a similar dream and a similar why. And those people will come alongside you and join your team. Those who lead inspire others. So I'll just leave you with this. Take the time to connect to your why today. Write it out. And a lot of times we say, if your why doesn't make you cry, it's not big enough. Because when you connect that emotion to it, you're going to go back to what I said. When you figure out a big enough why, the how doesn't matter. You will figure it out and you will go and do it until. Get that why figured out. Find out the whys of the leaders on your team and help them. And remember, those who lead inspire others. Go out today and try and inspire somebody else with your why. All right, guys. Have an awesome day. We'll see you back here again soon.